I'm Rosie. I'm Tony. And I'm Roz. And we're going to be talking about Pause's work, Pause's work on involvement, um, and some lessons that you've learned um, over the over the years and through COVID. So, so start off by by telling us about Pause's work. Who are you? Yeah, so Pause is a national charity and we work with women who have experienced or are at risk of experiencing repeat removals of children from their care. So on average, the women that we work with have had three children removed. Um, but we have 28 sites now across the UK and in terms of how it works locally in a national, in a local practice, a woman will receive up to 18 months of support and she receives that support while she has no children in her care. And it's about really taking a pause, hence the name, and focusing on yourself for that time. So the programme itself is not very prescriptive, and the women choose to work on whatever they want to work on. And they set goals with their practitioner and work towards those goals across the time. Um, so whilst it's not prescriptive, it is very intensive though. Pause is all based mm. on relationships mm. and actually it takes a lot of commitment from the women involved to create a relationship with their practitioner and to choose to work on some some of the more difficult sides or more complex sides of their lives, things that they might have been struggling with for quite a long time. Mm. Um, but it varies from woman to mm. woman. And then they receive 18 months support and then after pause, um, we're at the moment developing our sort of pause next step service, which mm. is more light touch support um, for people once they've finished the programme. So for example, Tony's finished the programme for how long, Tony? It's been a year and a half now, so I graduated a year and a half ago. And what was it like, what was it like being on the programme? Um, it was really good. At first, um, I was a bit apprehensive as mm. usual. Um, but as I got to know like my pause worker, like how good to that, I love the whole organisation, I felt like um, I can trust them with like things mm. that I've been through. I had someone mm. to talk to, mm. um, made new relationships, like friends mm. um, that I'm still in contact with to this day. Right. So yeah, it was really a good experience. It helped right. me personally, like with my confidence as well. So like, that's something that I give a lot of thanks to Paul's for. Mm. And there's and there's a, a a community. I mean, tell me about the the sort of all of the involvement, the involvement work you do. Yeah, so we have focused, I mean, because Pause is still quite a young charity, we focused very recently um, in the last two to three years on involving the women more in all areas of the organisation. Um, so you'll see our involvement strategy is behind Tony there. Um, but really, we have a very simple strategy, so we try and involve the women in everything we do and work together to make things better. That's the mm. aim of the strategy, working together to make things better. Um, and what that means in practice is that we want women to get involved in all elements of what Pause does. So, I mean, Tony will tell you about particular examples, but we really try, we don't, we try to involve women in all of our recruitment. Mm -hmm. um, now we try and involve women in our induction when new people start. We, not so long ago, recruited a new chair for our board, which we involved a group of women in. Um, we try and involve women when we're speaking at conferences or we're going to events. All of those opportunities, really, that we have where, well, everything that we do, we think that it's going to be, we're going to make a better decision if we involve the women that we work with because their experience is so valid and important and it's different from our own experience. Mm -hmm. So working together, we actually think we can make things better. Um, so. Not so long ago, we had, well, just before lockdown, we had an exhibition, which Tony was really involved in, starting from um, the ground up, really, starting from the idea of having an exhibition, because Tony's very creative. Um, but Tony, you were involved in the whole process, weren't you? Um, yeah, I was. It was a good experience. Um, so, we done, like, the interviewing um, curators and decided, like, which one could help us the most mm. with the exhibition. Mm. We visited the location and the set up to make sure it was suitable for our exhibition. We also came up with the name, um, took part in like saying poems and performing, which was really good. Um, yeah. and then we also got to enjoy other people's performances as well. So not only was we part of putting it all together, we got to experience it as an audience because a lot of us hadn't heard each other's poems and stuff mm. before. So it was really good. Mm. 
And how did how did it come about? How did you get the ideas for it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm one of these people where if you I just if I hear something, that's it, like my brain will just go and it was just mm. it was just flowing, it was easy, like we had mm. the right people with us. Um mm. I feel like the name Our Journey Continued was literally what it is. It's our journey mm. continued, we've gone through the experience, we've now joined in, um, graduated and now we're letting you know that the rest of our story is not finished here just because we're mm. no longer with pause. Mm. Um, as was said that like we still keep in contact, we still help with pause, pause conferences and stuff like that. So it's good to know that our journey is still continuing and we can still mm. help people and that's mm. exactly what I mm. plan to do. Mm. And the women that Paul's work with are really creative. I mean, Tony's an example of someone who's really creative because actually we try and um, encourage lots of creativity to happen in the practices. So over the last three years, we've been putting in place uh, local work with artists in practices because actually we find that using storytelling, using narrative, using theatre, those sorts of mediums are a really good way of showing impact in a way that's accessible and actually it can be hard to think about writing a story or writing a poem because if you've got a blank piece of paper in front of you, especially if you've, if you've experienced quite a lot of trauma, as mm. a lot of the women that we work with have, mm. but so many of the women that we work with find it a powerful and really helpful way to express emotion. Mm. So what we were seeing out in practice, and the practice that Tony worked with also had an arts programme, mm. what we were seeing was that women were sharing so much personal things in a more accessible way yeah. creatively yeah. and actually we needed to find a way to take those experiences and take those narratives and put them in a space that felt like it was like it was sort of um, giving them the space that they deserved so over 200 people I think it was around 220 people 220 people came to the exhibition and the tw you know there was spoken word. Tony did some amazing mm. spoken word. There was mm. poetry. There was films, and it was just getting across really the women's different experiences and taking that to different audiences. Mm. Um, and Tony actually works for an arts organisation that we worked with in partnership with that exhibition. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think we use creativity as like mm. partly as an engagement tool to work with women to actually through the program, mm -hmm. but also afterwards as a way to display the impact of mm. Paul's work, but also the journey that the women have been on and actually all of the, that they have achieved can be shown to different audiences mm. in a way that's less just write down your story and actually it's constructive. Yeah. What, um, how did, what, how, what do you think some of the other people made of it? Like what do you think came out of it in terms of how they felt, what, you know, what it was doing for them? Um, I feel like as much as for the people that was delivering like their pieces um was given like themselves i felt like we touched those in the audience there was like yeah. a lot of tears clapping yeah. um even like after the performances we had like members of the public like hugging us and like mm. congratulating us and telling us that you've done good mm. so i feel like as much as it benefited us it mm. did benefit a lot of people in the audience mm. um i did mm. say to us in an earlier conversation that um if i wasn't part of pause like line up on the stage it would be a really good experience for me I probably would have still thought about it like a few days later mm. and it just makes you have a different out um, outlook on uh, mothers because people just think okay yeah, mums you go through this you go through that but nobody understands like the other bits of it where people might be struggling or might be depressed and there's just other things that's going on with them mm that's not really in the public mm. so it's good to like understand and we can also help other mums with our experience and yeah. help them to have like a better experience or like maybe just look at things different and see if they can get help wherever yeah yeah yeah, yeah um, one of the women did a song for us that. as well and we also had short um, video as well and lots mm. of mixed media pieces that the women have been making so we had photography, for example, that mm. the women have been taking photos over mm. the two-year period mm. before, and also um, uh, big sort of installations. This mm. basically this sort of setup, actually, yeah. with this tree, yeah. uh, which is the women's hopes and experiences that they've put together on this tree. So 
so it was like a collaborative project for everyone to add to. Um, but we had loads of different things, and just feeding on what Tony was saying in terms of people's feedback was really amazing in terms of we had a lot of student social workers there, we had a lot of people that were practicing social workers who, as Tony said, when when you're working um, when you're working in that way previously with social workers, the women that we support have obviously all experienced mm -hmm. social work involvement and there might not be that time and space to actually hear more about the narrative of the woman and more about her experience. Yeah. So, so many of the social workers left um, and the pause practitioners and other professionals yeah. left feedback that actually hearing from the women's experiences has, has affected them in a way that they're going to think differently in their practice. Mm -hmm. And one example that we've got, which we've actually got on the pause website, is a film mm -hmm. called More Than What's Written. Mm -hmm. And it's about um, a, well, a group of women in North East Lincolnshire made the film. Mm. It's about their experiences of professional language in domestic abuse. Mm. And so often we hear that you know, when, when people are taking notes and when people are making reports, mm. which have to be made, of course, mm. the language that we're using sometimes as professionals isn't accessible to the people that we're working with. Mm -hmm. um, so the message, a very strong message from the women um, in that area were to professionals to use accessible language, to use language that they could understand. So they made a short film, um, which actually the feedback that we've got on that, and um, people have yeah. tried, uh, people have then taken it to train the police up in the mm. local area, mm. um, and there was lots of strong feedback on mm. sort of how how that gets you thinking actually mm. from mm. hearing the people's mm. experience directly from them, mm. how that gets you thinking and then can change practice for the better. Mm. Yeah, and did you? Did you, so you use feedback to sort of capture the impact it was having, like talking to audiences? How did you, how did you try and capture that? To what extent do you think it is possible to, to, to capture it? Yeah, it's tough because I mean, when you saw, for example, Tony's performance, I mean, it was just like, like you said, there were lots of tears and clapping, and you know, it's a very emotional sort of space. Mm. And actually, I think at pause but at, you know lots of charities we can sometimes focus too much on the hard data and hard mm. outcomes and of course we strive to you know for women mm. to get better housing for example or for mm. women to improve their mental health but those are things that could take a long time and that actually they're co those focusing only on those hard outcomes you might miss it even an 18 month intensive program you might miss those what pause is trying to do is actually lay the foundation for change yeah. um, and the foundation for those improvements that might take you know a considerable effort it might still be going on yeah. after pause I mean you know yeah. 18 months after pause so what I guess we're trying to do and the impact of the exhibition was really the softer stuff yeah. um, and the fact that putting into words your experiences I mean, through spoken word through narrative that shows changes and actually it can be used as a tool for reflection as well you're yeah. thinking back and you're processing that yeah. so not yeah. too sure if I answered yeah. your question but it, yeah. it's that softer stuff that actually yeah. is hard to capture I mean what in terms of actually how we got feedback at the yeah. exhibition we used very small uh, feedback yeah. cards like this yeah and we shared the feedback with the women afterwards yeah um, we're hoping to take the exhibition online yeah. because of our new world yeah. but uh, yeah. watch this space for that yeah. <laughs> that'd be brilliant I'd, I'd love to see it. I'd absolutely love to see it. But there's loads of other stuff that you've that you've done um, that that women participate in, right? I mean, your your whole strategy was was created together. I'd love to hear about that. Um, I've got time. Tell me about how you made the strategy. Yeah. So the strategy, which is behind us, um, as I say, it was created because we wanted to focus on getting women involved in all areas of pause. Mm. Um, and so, actually. I mean, we started by reading literature, so David Wilcox's effective, this is the Guide to Effective Participation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is really great, yeah. and looking at the Arnstein Ladder of Participation and how we can adapt it to pause and to the mm -hmm. pause model, mm -hmm. which we're really, really lucky, I guess, because relationships are central to pause, mm -hmm. and so with those relationships, we have been able to build on participation. Mm. We're still mm. learning. Mm. We're still learning. Um, so we started with trying to build a participation strategy. Mm. Actually, mm. the first thing we learned when talking to a group of women mm. is 
what on earth is a participation strategy? Mm. They wanted to call it getting involved. Mm -hmm. It made sense to us, mm -hmm. so we renamed it as getting involved. Yeah. And it's all about how we work together to make things better. Yeah. Um, we didn't want anyone to feel obliged, I guess, to mm -hmm. get involved. And actually, mm -hmm. it's fine if you, you know, you can still um, receive the post program if you're eligible, mm -hmm. and you don't have to get involved. Mm -hmm. It's completely optional part of it. Mm -hmm. um, but we try and make different opportunities for people to get involved. Um, and so, you know, what we talked about the exhibition, that's one project, but we also, um, as I say, try and get people involved in recruitment. Um, Tony has been involved in recruiting practitioners. Because, uh, actually, I'm members of the national team. Yeah, yeah. both. <laughs> that was really good. Um, yeah. It was, like, nice knowing that, like, Paul's wanted Paul's graduates to, like, help them with future... Um, practitioners mm. so that was good that putting all the questions together mm. um you had like a small little bio about them already mm -hmm. so like me and one of the, the ladies mm. that was interviewing like, we used to play like this game where we'll read who it is and try to see like if we can guess like how they're gonna be or mm -hmm. if, if they're how we think they was gonna be yeah. and a lot of the time like the women that came in sometimes we had like police officers and stuff right. and I was thinking oh, they're going to be a bit too stern too like yeah. not what we need <laughs> yeah, and yeah. they just always came in and shocked us so that was really? like my, yeah, that was like my favourite <laughs> totally bit totally the opposite <laughs> yeah it was like my favourite bit um, yeah. it was hard um, to pick yeah. as well yeah. um, but I don't know I just felt like really I wouldn't say needed but I just felt like I was part of something really good and mm. It was nice being involved, um, mm. seeing like different qualities, even seeing the qualities that we wanted mm. in like our own practitioners as well, like mm. got their, them, that in the people that we were interviewing, so that mm. was quite good. Mm. It was just lovely mm. really. Um, mm. And even like some of them, like a few of them were just grateful to have the opportunity to speak to us, like it was, it was about mm. the job but at the same yeah. time it was more like a learning thing for them, yeah. so that was good to know that. That we was touching people in the, in the stages. Yeah, of, so yeah. That was quite good. I guess give them a sense of of what the job was like. Yeah. Who they'd be working with and a sense of the the philosophy of the place as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like when we involve women, they have different questions to us, you know. And yeah. what's important? What's important to you in terms of working with somebody so intensively has to be important to us. And yeah. you know, we're not going to make an effective decision. Yeah. unless we've involved the women that we work with through yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that said, we are still learning, and I think what we have learned is how important it is to prepare people, mm. how important it is to prepare people so that they know what to expect, especially now mm. in this new world where mm. you know we're trying to involve people virtually. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's really essential. Yeah. And then actually when you're there as well, trying to be as organised as possible, you know, have travel booked in advance, yeah. And sometimes it takes longer to organise, yeah. you know, just because you've got an extra person or yeah. an extra few people or an yeah. extra panel involved. Yeah. Um, so, you know, on a practical level, it could yeah. take um, longer. Yeah. And then afterwards as well, we're always thinking, and it depends on you know, how they're involved and what mm. the involvement project is, but also always thinking about how we can follow up with people mm. and how we can check that they're okay yeah. afterwards rather than just involving them in yeah. the moment. Yeah. Um, I think what's really important as well, and which we don't see happening across the sector, is rewarding people for their time. Mm -hmm. And I know it can be difficult because it can come mm. into, you know, you can come into um, difficulty with things like that. But there's always ways, whether it's mm. through training, whether it's through mm. um, recognition in some way, mm. to talk to people. And we try and mm. have those conversations about mm. actually how would you like to be rewarded for your time, mm. um, and are there things we can do to yeah. Yeah. to make sure that we're doing that. Yeah. How how's um, how's the work been affected by COVID? Because I guess the stuff that could, would be happening face to face, something like an exhibition, just wouldn't be possible. But I guess other things are. We were very lucky, weren't well, we, Tony, to get that exhibition just in? <laughs> yeah, very lucky for the exhibition. I yeah. think we got that just in the nick of time. Yeah, um, yeah, that was great. Well planned. <laughs> things have changed now. <laughs> yeah, things have changed. Yeah, so I mean, locally. The, the practices are, are working with loads of creativity, mm. loads of tenacity, but it's a difficult time for everybody, and we have to bear that in mind. Mm. Um, nationally, all of our getting involved work has gone online. Yeah. So from April 
to now, we've delivered 1,501 act activities. Um, yeah, so I'm going to get it maybe slightly wrong, but I think at the last count that was to 303 women. Yeah. So yeah. that's each woman being involved in roughly five activities. Yeah. Obviously it doesn't work like that. Some yeah. people want to be involved virtually more than others. Yeah. Um, but we have changed. Yeah. You know, we've changed the, the activities that we do. Yeah. Um, we started a book club through lockdown mm. to mm. help people. We're sending out books mm. to their homes and then they can um, join virtually if they want to yeah. discuss the book. Yeah. We started yoga, um, which, you know, we're still learning. Yoga didn't really work. Mm. So we ended up stopping doing that. Tony's laughing. Everyone stopped. <laughs> Everyone had a go and then gave up. Exactly. <laughs> Across the nation. Exactly. So we started yoga. It didn't work. So we stopped that. Oh. Um, we're doing pause weekly bingo sessions online, oh. which people are enjoying. Yeah, um, bingo. Yeah, bingo. <laughs> um, so we've tried a lot of stuff. Uh, a yeah. really successful thing for us has been craft kits. Right. So we've sent out 932 craft kits, I think it is, Your numbers during are. lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got all the numbers. Um, but yeah, we've sent out a lot of craft kits mm. and people have been crafting at home. Something to do. Yeah. Um, and actually, we've pulled some of those craft kits into a collaborative piece. Mm. So um, women were making a mask and taking photos of the mask in their uh -huh. favourite locations. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then we've put the mask together to create yeah. a rainbow. Uh -huh. So um, all the colours, all the different colours making yeah. a... We're calling it the lockdown rainbow piece. Um, but it's women being involved in something bigger and actually yeah. realising that even if you're in your house, you're still part of the community. Yeah. And even if we can't see you right now, yeah. I mean, I know practitioners have been doing doorstop drop-offs if they can't visit the women in person. Yeah. And they've been dropping off, you know, mugs and um, hot chocolate sachets yeah. so that they can make hot chocolate and go yeah. for a walk. Yeah. Um, and they'll phone them up on the phone so that they can have a walk still together, but they're yeah. apart. Right, right, right. So those kind yeah. of things that, you know, try and, I guess, focus on connecting and staying yeah. together. Yeah. Whilst sometimes it's not possible for us to be. Yeah. Um, but Tony was involved in a very interesting online activity, actually. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody knows that. Everything's that Zoom. Yeah. I'm not really a fan of Zoom. Zoom but Live. The, we had a Zoom um, meeting in New Zealand in the farm. Oh my God. So <laughs> that was really amazing. I got to see like the lambs. That was my favourite bit. And Aww. I just loved the lambs and like lambing. And it was just so cute. And the chickens and like the sizes of the eggs were like massive. <laughs> 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 it was really good. It was just like yeah. seeing like farm life in another country for me that was yeah. good and it just felt like i got to experience something in another country without having to get on the plane so yeah, yeah. that was a 14 hour flight <laughs> and and was that with other women as well so it was a group it was a group conference with like the pause practitioners and yeah. pause women um, yeah so that was really good it yeah. was nice yeah. um, and is it still good. does it still feel like you can connect with people well, for me, I feel like I can, but like I said, I'm not really like the Zoom person, yeah. but there is other ways that we stay in contact, so that's yeah. like via the phone, texting, yeah. WhatsApp. Um, I still get invited to like all the Zoom stuff, so mm. it's like, even if I might not want to, they don't make me feel like, oh, well, you can't join in the next one. They still yeah. like send the invite and it's up to you. And even if you're not feeling up to it, they still give you the option to like change your mind at the last minute and still mm. enter. Mm. So that's mm. really nice to me. Um, and just having someone to talk to because sometimes it's like you don't necessarily want to talk to your friends. Um, some people for me I find like speaking to Paul's practitioner, practitioners are better than speaking to my friends. Like all my friends is like all jokey and stuff and maybe like I feel like you can't really help me with what I need. Whereas Paul's like you understand what we're going through right now. You, can, you understand that I might be going back into like a sad place, and they always put me up, like pull me up out of it. So I like that. Um, mm -hmm. I've known right now if it wasn't in COVID, I'll see all of them like mm. as often as possible. So mm. it's good. Still mm. in contact. Still mm. here. And, mm. and the community carries on. Carries on, literally. Yeah. So I'm happy. Yeah, it's amazing. Guys, thank you so much for, for telling me about this. It's, it's, it's amazing stuff. Um, and on the exhibition, if you fancied, I'd love to hear a little bit of some of the spoken word you've done to um, end it. Okay. 
Um, this poem's called My Journey. This is my journey, my journey, not yours. You can't tell me how to feel, you can't tell me how to heal. Fifteen, I found you, fifteen, I loved you. I've never felt loved like this. I mean, I was only a kid with a kid. Although my life was hard, I was adamant to give you the best start. My veins, my heart, my beautiful work of art. Was it hard? Yes. Would I do it all again? Yes. The only thing I would have done different is hold you closer to my chest. I know I love you and you know I love... Um, I do. Sorry, that was really bad. Carry on, yeah, carry on. Beautiful. I know you love me and you know I love you too. And no matter the distance, it will forever be us too. I kept you for six years and I did a bloody good job. And now that you're with your daddy, you know that there's no love lost. This is my journey, not yours. And big up everyone that held me up at pause. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. That's lovely, Tony. That's beautiful. Thank